The short answer is no. In fact, India is dealing with shortages on all fronts. Oxygen, medicines, vaccines, even doctors and nurses. The capacity is limited. The demand is overwhelming. The result is chaos and what is being called a system collapse. Let's start with the vaccines. So far, India has two vaccines available for use. Covishield, that is the Oxford vaccine, Ox Oxford AstraZeneca, and Covaxin, which is made in India. Now, put together, India gets about 70 to 85 billion doses per month of both the vaccines. Earlier, 15% of the total supplies were being exported. But for the moment, India has stopped exports. So we have anywhere between 70 to 85 million doses per month. How many do we need? About 170 million doses per month. That's if India has to cover 80% of the population by the end of this year. And if India aims at universal coverage, that is vaccinating the entire adult population, we need about 220 million doses per month. There's a clear gap. These estimates, these are estimates, in fact, you could give or take a few, but you cannot deny the fact that the numbers fall short. The supply is limited because the producers are limited. At the moment, more than 10 million doses are reportedly available with states and union territories. In the next three days, another 8 million doses will be supplied. So that's what we have to start vaccinating people between 18 and 45, about 18 million doses. And the population we are targeting? almost 600 million people. So if you get an appointment, do not miss your turn and take whatever you're getting, Covishield or Covaxin. The other big shortage, and should I say more pressing shortage, is that of oxygen. It is essential for the treatment of Wuhan virus patients. Patients with severe symptoms run out of breath. That's because the virus spreads to the lungs. So they need supplemental oxygen. That's what keeps them alive as doctors treat the infection. What happens when you cannot find supplemental oxygen? You gasp for breath. The infection worsens. It can lead to death. Indian hospitals do not have enough oxygen. The crisis exploded last week. Hospitals gave countdowns. Oxygen to run out in two hours, four hours, 20 minutes, they said. They turned to social media with appeals. They went to court asking for supplies. The scenes and stories were heart-rending. Here's a question. Is India short of oxygen? You wouldn't believe me if I said no. So let me show you some figures. India is a significant producer of oxygen. It produces more than 7,000 metric tons of oxygen per day. Per day, 7,000 metric tons. In recent weeks, the demand has shot up tremendously. Going by one estimate, India's Wuhan virus patients need more than 17 million cubic meters of oxygen. This is among the highest in the world. Now, the requirement for medical oxygen has increased by 76%. From almost 4,000 metric, metric tons per day to approximately 7,000 metric tons per day. That's our demand right now. So on paper, India can technically meet this demand because we are producing this much oxygen. We even have a few metric tons to spare. But in practice, this oxygen is not reaching patients and hospitals. That's because India does not have enough tankers to supply it. Which is why countries around the world are sending oxygen tankers to India, containers. This week, 14 tankers arrived from three countries. How many does India already have? More than 1,200 oxygen tankers, according to reports. They have a capacity of more than 16,000 metric tons of liquid oxygen. But it takes up to a week of turnaround time, and that's where the problem lies. It takes one week for officials to pick up oxygen from one source and deliver it to another. The biggest bottleneck are cryogenic containers. These are basically used to transport oxygen in liquid form, cryogenic containers. Now, with all of these being flown in, the crisis should ease at least a bit in the next few days. That's when India might have to face another one. As you know, we are reporting over 300,000 daily cases. And if this trajectory continues, we might not have enough doctors to treat the patients. Recently, some scientists from India's IITs came up with a model. They believe the second wave will peak by the month of May. But India will still be dealing with millions of cases. Their estimate says India could have 3.3 to 3.5 million active cases between the 11th of May and the 15th of May. Almost 3.5 million people who are positive. That's like an explosion of cases. You can add more beds. 
you can produce more oxygen, you can fly in tankers, you can get more drugs, but where will you get more doctors and nurses to treat the patients? Already India suffers a serious crunch of skilled medical personnel. Before the pandemic, we had one doctor for more than 1400 patients in India, one doctor. There is a 76% shortage of medical specialists in government hospitals in this country. The second wave has pushed India's doctors to their limits. They're working through the week, they're working over time, they're trying to save lives. Can they get more help? Student doctors and nurses could be roped into help. According to one claim, more than 200,000 nursing students and 25,000 student doctors are waiting in the wings. They have completed their training. They just have to appear for their final exams. India could tap into this talent pool. Postpone the exams if needed for the moment. Let them work with existing healthcare workers. And I must say this. All of these are proposals based on trajectories and projections which may or may not come true. But experience has taught us that we must hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.